Hi, I'm Chris Naniga, the Director of Training Development at Swift Otter, and welcome to the next in our series on starting big commerce development. So you have a good handle on what the big commerce platform is and what its SaaS architecture means for the strategy that you need to take to develop custom experiences on your big commerce stores. Uh, but if you're ready to roll up your sleeves and start learning the topics that you need to learn to start doing big commerce development, you might be overwhelmed by the wide array of topics and concepts to be found in the big commerce documentation. Uh, what are all those different move moving pieces? What categories do different bits fit under? What topic do you start with? That's what we're going to focus on in this video, just an overview of the main pillars of topics and tools uh, that you need for big commerce development, the, the main tools in your tool belt. We're not going to go into a super amount of detail on any of these, uh, but this is just to help you compartmentalize the different concepts uh, that you need to have proficiency in uh, for different kinds of big commerce development. That's something that really helps me as I as I progress and learn more about developing on the big commerce platform is uh, I, I just want to know upfront what are all the different moving pieces, the different uh, the different entry points or ways of interacting with big commerce and then I want to be able to to uh, guide my own learning for focusing on a specific topic at a time and when I learn new topics I want to know where I can file them away in those categories. Uh, so hopefully this will be helpful to you as well as we review the basic concepts of these main pillars. Before we move on to the main pillars, I do want to emphasize something that you should consider a necessary prerequisite to your developer journey on Big Commerce, and that is the Big Commerce application itself. Uh, that's something that you don't want to overlook. And before you dive right into Stencil or the Big Commerce APIs and start trying to make custom things happen with your Big Commerce store, you want to make sure to take sufficient time to familiarize yourself with the native features of your Big Commerce store, how to manage your catalog of products and your customers and your orders what kind of data lives on those entities and what it looks like, all the different configuration options that are available in your store. Uh, you might be surprised at how fast uh, and how easily things will click even when you're studying uh, specific development techniques uh, if you have a good foundation of knowledge uh, for big commerce data and how your store functions. But let's move on to the first major pillar for uh, big commerce development concepts, and that's the big commerce APIs. Uh, this is kind of the central proficiency in big commerce development uh, and one that many tools in your tool set are going to kind of revolve around. Uh, whether you are developing a theme for the default storefront with Stencil or developing a headless storefront or developing apps to accomplish custom features on your store, chances are it's not going to be long before you need to develop proficiency in the different big commerce APIs for doing something that you need to do. There is a lot to cover on the topic of big commerce APIs because there are different APIs and they work in different ways. There are REST management APIs for manipulating all kinds of data in your big commerce store. There's a REST storefront API for managing particular carts for customers. There are GraphQL APIs uh, that maximize uh, fast fetching of data from the client side, from your storefront. And then there are specifications for things like uh, tax provider APIs and shipping rates provider APIs if custom tax rates or shipping rates are something that you need to implement. There, there's so much to cover here on the topic of APIs, even at a cursory glance, that that is in fact going to be the topic of our next video in our series is just reviewing the different categories of big commerce APIs, the different authentication methods that you need to be aware of uh, for each, and that kind of thing. We're going to dive into that next time. Our next pillar, and probably the second most important, is Stencil, the theme engine for the default big commerce front end. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about Page Builder along with it. 
Uh, so Stencil is the engine that the default front end runs on. It's the development framework that you'll use for customizing that front end and is also a node-based CLI tool that you will use for, uh, for a local development environment when you're developing Stencil themes. Now, this is a category that might not apply to you if you're going to be exclusively building headless sites for big commerce, uh, but if that's not the case, then no doubt this is going to be one of your first stops for customizing your big commerce store if you're customizing the default front end of big commerce what you're doing is building a stencil theme the framework has all of the components and tools that you need for the front end portion of your custom development including a versatile templating language in handlebars js and automatic bundling of all of your static assets there's built-in support for sas as the css preprocessor language there is a built-in style library called Citadel, which is itself built on the foundation framework. And there's also a built-in JavaScript utility library to make certain aspects of interacting with your big commerce store easier. The default theme that is applied by default on all new big commerce stores is called Cornerstone, and the code for that is available on GitHub. Uh, so you can use that on a typical basis as your starting point for your own themes. The BigCommerce page builder is not a development tool per se, uh, which is why it's not one of our main pillars, but I mention it here along with Stencil uh, because the two are kind of intrinsically related. The page builder is a graphic content management tool available in your BigCommerce admin uh, where you can use some powerful and versatile widgets for creating whole content layouts uh, directly in your admin with a WYSIWYG interface. Page Builder is seamlessly integrated with stencil themes uh, for things like defining regions where widgets can be placed. And so it's likely that as you're developing your stencil themes, uh, familiarizing yourself with the capabilities of Page Builder uh, is going to be a critical part of that process. The term web application is a very broad term, one that could pretty much apply to anything that you're doing uh, when it comes to big commerce development. And so it's less of a pillar of its own and something broader that probably incorporates the tools that we're talking about in all these pillars. But I do want to talk about the concept of big commerce single click apps or more accurately, the OAuth workflow that goes with them. So single-click apps are web applications that are they're hosted separately from your big commerce store, uh, but web applications that support endpoints for a specific OAuth workflow that lets them uh, be installed in a big commerce store directly from the admin panel. All apps that are available from the big commerce marketplace are single click apps, and you can also develop your own uh, single click apps that are available only for your own big commerce stores. Uh, once an app is installed this way, it can also present its own interface. Uh, for whatever custom functionality is part of your app directly in the big commerce admin now apps that you develop to enable custom features on your store they might need to be single click apps uh, to provide admin functionality or they might not need to be although there is a case to be made for just kind of making it your standard practice to support the single click uh, oauth workflow for any apps that you develop uh, but uh, understanding that workflow, the endpoints that you need to implement to make your app installable, uh, how to deal with the, the multi-tenant nature of big commerce stores and tracking the, the different stores that your application has been installed on, uh, all of that is kind of a, a central category of knowledge as you approach developing applications that interact with big commerce. The topic of customizing your big commerce checkout really deserves to be a pillar of its own because the JavaScript-based checkout interface actually doesn't live in your stencil theme if you're using the default BigCommerce front end. Uh, the handling of sensitive payment details and critical operations in checkout mean that by, by separating it from the main code of your theme, the, the full burden of PCI compliance can fall on big commerce as your SaaS provider instead of you or your merchant. Uh, in fact, many uh, fully headless big commerce builds that don't use the default front end at all will still uh, direct the user to the hosted big commerce native checkout for those PCI compliance reasons. 
None of that means that you cannot customize BigCommerce's checkout to your heart's content on your own store because you do have the option to host a different checkout interface separately from the built-in checkout uh, if that is something that you need to do on your store. And BigCommerce provides appropriate development tools uh, for you to be able to do that effectively. There is an open source checkout SDK providing a, a robust library of different JavaScript utilities uh, to do critical operations uh, interacting with your big commerce store from your checkout front end. And the default uh, checkout interface itself, the full code for that is also available uh, for you to clone or fork on GitHub so that you can just use that default big commerce checkout as your starting point and customize from there. Just be aware that if you do build your own checkout interface or, or customize from the default checkout interface, you are taking some degree of responsibility for PCI compliance for the way that you're hosting that and the way you're dealing with data. Uh, but of course, uh, that can be mitigated to a large degree uh, if you use uh, if you use secure hosted payment options uh, from your payment providers. The next in my list of major pillars is big commerce webhooks. And that could be considered quite a bit smaller of a pillar than many of the others on our list. This, this topic doesn't encompass nearly as much information as some of the others that we've reviewed. Uh, but nevertheless, I think this deserves to be a pillar of its own uh, because there are some unique concepts in play here. Uh, so when you need the flow of data uh, between Big Commerce and your custom application uh, to be initiated by Big Commerce when certain things happen, when a, a cart is updated or when an order is placed or events like that, when you need the data flow to be in that direction rather than your application initiating uh, some kind of API request to Big Commerce, webhooks are what you're going to use. Now, uh, you use the Big Commerce API to register a webhook. Uh, so from that perspective, it is kind of a subset of our API pillar. Uh, but understanding the, the workflow that happens when a webhook event is actually triggered in Big Commerce, uh, what kind of endpoints you need to set up in your application to listen to those events and then respond uh, to, the, to the data that you're delivered when those events occur, all of that is kind of a unique topic that falls outside of just dealing with the Big Commerce APIs. So it's important to be aware that this is one of the moving pieces or one of the available entry points for how you can interact with your big commerce store. And the final pillar on our list, if you don't think it's too corny for me to include it, is your favorite web application framework. I've said before that there really is no such thing as developing on big commerce. Uh, that is aside from the stencil framework that's very specific to the default front end. Uh, but when you develop for big commerce, what you're really doing is developing your own web applications your way using whatever tools you choose. Uh, and just interacting with a big commerce store using the different tools and pillars that we've talked about. So I think it really is true that one of those pillars, one of the tools in your tool belt is a good web application framework. You're going to use that tool along with the other things we've talked about and compose them together to build the things that you need to build in your own big commerce store. If you come from a background like me where the framework or frameworks that you've developed in were kind of determined for for you, uh, then this wide open aspect of big commerce development might be both exciting to you and also a little intimidating as you start to ask yourself, how do I make the right decision for the tools that I'm going to use to develop web applications? Uh, I'm not here to tell you a specific web framework to use for your big commerce apps or your big commerce uh, headless storefronts. Uh, I, I don't know if that's going to be Next.js or Laravel or Django for you, uh, but just remember that it's far less important to pick the perfect tool or framework than it is to just pick one, pick one with uh, a coding language that you're already familiar with, and start writing code. I find it useful to compartmentalize uh, as I learn new development topics and continue to grow as a developer, to be able to file things away into specific categories. And when I'm learning a new platform, uh, rather than just focusing on whatever task is in front of me, I like to be able to conceptualize what really represents that platform in total. What are all the different moving pieces and the different 
ways that I can interact with it. Uh, so hopefully, even though we have barely scratched the surface of just the concepts of these main pillars uh, of proficiencies uh, that it takes to develop in big commerce, uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you like it is to me uh, to be able to kind of conceptualize what those different categories and concepts are.